Kashala Yawan, in the name of Yahweh Shemar Shah, peace and grace and mercy in the walls of the Most High, in the name of Yahweh Shah, to the 12 lost tribes who are scattered abroad. So let's go to our opening subject today. It's called The Judgment of the Great Whore. We are in the time of revelations and we are in the time of prophecy. This is what's going to keep the Israelites of the elect focused and on the Most High's plan. So let's go to our opening scripture today in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 39, verse 1. This is in the Apocrypha. Ecclesiastes, chapter 39, verse 1. It is it. But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High. See, if they're not dealing with the law and the testimony, According to the book of Isaiah, there's no light in them. So if your congregation, wherever you are out there in the internet world, and our, our people that are scattered abroad, if the brothers are not teaching you the law and the testimony according to the Bible, there's no light in them. If you're dealing with other books other than this Bible or other documents written by men, it's not of Yahweh Shah. So let us get that straight to the point. And it's occupied in the meditation thereof. See, you're supposed to meditate on these scriptures all the time. When you read these scriptures on your spare time, meditate on these things that the Lord is showing you in the Bible. And it says, We'll seek out the wisdom of all the ancient. All the ancient what? The ancient prophets. Where is it found at? Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah. But you got to be taught these things by the elect of Israel. Like it says in the book of Peter's, there's no private interpretation of these scriptures. So what you're about to hear today is coming from the Holy Spirit from your hollow. So you see all these teachers out here, they're picking up all these different books, and they're trying to tell you what's in Revelation, what the woman is, what the beast is, the mark of the beast, and so forth and so on. You have to be of the elect, and you have to have the spirit of your hollow and the laws in you in order for you to interpret this Bible. Period. Tell you that in scriptures. And be occupied in prophecies. So here at the base, we occupy ourselves with prayer, we occupy ourselves in the law, and we occupy ourselves in what's written in this book. So let's go to Revelations, right? Chapter 1, verse 1. The revelations of Mahasha Jesus Christ, or Yahweh, uh, Ayah, Layasha, which Yahweh gave, uh, which gave unto him to show his servants things which must shortly come to pass. You see that? So we are living in a time of the revelations of Yahweh Shah and the things that's written in here that you're about to hear today is for your edification. And these things are getting ready to happen in the earth. So the Most High always sends the prophets out to forewarn our people and their sins so that they can repent and come back to the covenant and the law and keep the faith of His Son so that we can be saved and we'll be well-rounded Israelites. That's what it says. And uh, which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and sanctified it by his angel unto his servant, John. John was one of the last apostles. The other ones had gotten killed off in their administration uh, works. And they came to their end. And then the other apostles that were still around, like John, they put them on the island of Patmos, which is over there in the Mediterranean Sea. They put them in jail and they put them in the outcast them, so to speak. The Romans did who bear record of the word of Yahweh and of the testimony of Yahweh Shah and of all things that he saw. So these things that you see in Revelations have to be interpreted. By who? By the prophets. The servants or the Israelites. Which ones? The elect. Is everybody in Israel servant and everybody in Israel prophet? No. The book of Jude tells you everybody don't have the spirit. So when Yahweh chooses the elect of Israel to go out, our biggest mission 
is to get past our people's mindset of the ignorance that they have in them imposed on them by the will of man. See what it says here? Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy. There you go again with the word prophecy. And keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. So everything that's in Revelations is our guide into the coming of Yahushua. So as we start to see these prophecies unfold, that builds up your faith, that builds up your foundation in the law and the testimony, and it gives you hope because you know what's coming. The Lord said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I shall send the Holy Spirit, which is a comforter, and he shall teach you all things. See, the comforter is not a man. It's the Holy Spirit. That comes from the Most High. That's a gift given to those who are obedient and those who are of the elect of Israel. See? John to the seven churches which are in Asia. So at that time, we're going back to the first century AD. So John acknowledged that there were seven, uh, they call them churches, but the word assembly means in Hebrew, Tazawa Ba the congregation. So there were seven of them back then. And these congregations of Israel, they were in the law, and the apostles had went through there on their missions, and they had put things in order that Yahweh had told them. And then the congregations were meeting on the Sabbaths. They were keeping the high holy days. And we were amongst the Gentiles. And these Gentile nations saw us doing these things just like today. We're coming together. And these Gentile nations are seeing us coming away from their Christmas, New Year's, Halloween. And even yourself, you're going to see people resent you when you start leaving. They're going to say, she don't, he, he don't come around no more. He, where is he going? He don't, he don't come around here. No. Well, why are they doing it? Because I'm telling you, in the book of Peter's, we're going to be doing this. And when we start going away from the Gentiles, we'll read that to you. They're going to start resenting you because they're still out there in the world. And when people are out there in the world, brothers and sisters, you have to lead them to their fashion. All right, so let's go to 1 Peter's chapter 4. And it's going to show you that. Let's go to 1 Peter's chapter 4, right? It says this. Uh, For as much then as Yahushua, or Yashar, or Makah, has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has uh, ceased from sin. So when you come on this path and you start walking with your the most high, you your own child, keeping the commandments, waking up to yourself, you walk on this path always. And you're going to catch afflictions and suffering because those of the world are going to oppose those who are righteous. It is written. Then uh, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of Yahweh. That's the hardest part we're going to have to overcome, people. Now, the Most High is calling you brothers and sisters uh, to the laws and commandments and the faith. Your friends, your relatives may not be called into this. Your co-workers on your jobs, people in your neighborhood. I got Catholics down the block right down here, down the road where I live at. They got shrines of Caesar Borgia up there. They got uh, statues, they sell saints and all of that garbage. I don't go down there messing with them fools. They got Jehovah's Witnesses around here. They got Baptists around here. So you gonna be in the same scenario, according to the Bible. And as you're walking in the light, they're going to still be walking. They're going to be looking at you like this. As you start to build yourself up in the Lord. See, that's what he told us about in here. And it says here, verse 3, For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. Now the Lord is making a difference between the real Gentiles, non-Israelites, and the word Gentile meaning those Israelites who had took on the Grecian ways. 
We were some of those Israelites that take, took on the Grecian ways. When you read in certain chapters of the Bible, it says Gentile is actually talking about Israelites that were living amongst the Gentiles and had left Jerusalem, left the covenant and the law, and this was their time to hear the gospel and to repent, and their disciples went out there and told them. So look, you, you, you foolish Galatians, who was he talking to? He was talking to Israelites. Like if I come to your hometown and I say, say if you live in Tampa, Florida, I say, you foolish champions. And I'm talking to the Israelites there. They're all Israelites. So when the apostles did that, they were talking to a whole group of Israelites who had taken on the Greek customs. And they went over there, preaching to them, said, look, you got to get circumcised. The Shah has come, and they showed him in the Bible that he had come and sacrificed himself. He said, no more animal sacrifices. You got to keep the law. Yes. Set up the congregations with the Sabbaths. Come in on the Sabbath day. And they set all of them. And the brothers started painting pictures of the Hamashai on the walls, and they put that stuff in their uh, temples like Sardis, Philadelphia, when you're reading uh, Corinthian, Corinth. And these were areas where Israelites were. And they had realized that the Shah had came, the Savior, and they had directed their, their faith, their prayers, and their services in him. See? And it says, when we walk in lavishness, lust, excess of wine, revelings, remember we used to celebrate Christmas? We all did it when we were children because we didn't know no better because our parents was foolish. And some of us went into these different denominations and different ideologies of our own people in their foolishness. So when the Lord calls you people, he's going to call you away from all of that. And you got to put it behind you. See? It say, get the hints. See what it says here? Banqueting and there were bottom adulteries. <laughs> Which one were you in? <laughs> Check it out. That's right there. Sure, and we, we coming to the, to the light now. So all these abominable idolatries were the idols of the Gentiles. Back then, they had groups that were coming in and they called them Nicolaitan doctrines. Paul and them ran into Edomites. There was philosophers. And they still here today. The Nicolaitan doctrines are Jehovah's Witnesses, Catholics, Baptists, Seven Day Adventists, all these so called whoredoms that come out of the Porsche Roman Church. And I'm going to show you that today. These are the groups that the Lord said in the Bible that were going to be false Christs and false prophets and apostles. Matthews 24, verse 24. And you're going to start seeing this in the things that they do. He said, you're going to know them by their fruits and the things that they do. And as it says in Colossians, this is not of Yahshua, it's of the world. It's not of your And you're going to start seeing these things. It ain't of the most high or his commandments. See what it says here? Verse 4. Wherein they think it strange that you run not with them in the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. You won't be evil now. Now that you're putting on your girdle, you're putting on your hairdresser sisters, and you're putting on your borders of blue, you're putting on your robes, brothers, the ones of you that do that in righteousness, they're going to look at you and say, you're part of that cult of the Israelites. And they're going to shun you. So learn to be alone. Learn to be with your brothers and sisters of the faith because it says, who shall what? Give account of him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead. And for this cause was the gospel preached also unto them that are dead. Who's the dead dry bones? We spoke about that last week. Our people. The other ones is dead in these groups. And the Lord told us to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and preach to these dry bones because our people right now are dead. That's why Ezekiel said, you know of Lord. He said, can these bones live? Can they live? And life, according to the Bible, is the laws. If you ain't got your house, 
don't shine your life, the Lord says, you don't have no life. And so we're going from deaf people unto life in Yahweh All our people that's out here that's not into this, they metal slaves, they set for uh, damnation and destruction because they don't believe. But the ones of us that the Lord reach, those going to be the apples of his eye. See? So let's go back to Revelations. Chapter 1. And it says here, verse 4, Grace be unto you and peace. And he was talking to these church areas over there while people were. It says, From him that which is, and which was, and which is to come. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne. And from Yahweh who is the faithful witness of the first begotten of the dead. So the ones of us that wake up now, we are the ones waking up out of this dead state of being, coming up out of these church systems and monuments and lies that our forefathers went into and we were taught to as children. And the, and the prince of the kings of the earth, or to him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and has made us kings and priests, and to Yahweh, his father, and him be glory and dominion forever and ever. So when that time come, the Lord promised us a crown on our heads. And we're going to get those crowns. Right now, we're not crowned. We're not crowned. So don't think you're crowned because you're, you're a bishop or you're an evangelist or whatever your position may be or a member of the congregation. These crowns are going to come in when the Hawashah returns and we go through these tribulations and are worthy of getting those crowns. That's why the Lord said, work out your salvation with fear and trembling and be convinced in your own mind that Yahweh is the power, his son is the Christ, and this Bible, according to Isaiah 34, 16, is his word. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. So verse 17 says what? And then came unto me one of the angels, which had the seven vows, and talk with me, saying uh, unto me, Come hither, and I will show you the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Remember that. It's a whore. And this whore is about to be judged. The angels have seven vows that they're going to pour upon the earth. And when they pour these things from the spiritual realm, an infinite throne of the Most High, these things come into the earth as events and prophecy. Like when you read about the four horsemen in Revelations, those are actually four spirits that the Lord is going to send in the earth, and these spirits are going to work on the minds of men. These are vibrations that is going to cause these men to go into in these times, death, economic destruction, plague, and so forth. It tells you that about the four horsemen and worldwide war. So when the Lord starts sending these uh, vows and open up these vows in the heavens, they're going to affect everything that's going on in Esau's kingdom. So this war that we're talking about in the Bible today, we're going to show you who this is talking about. And it says here, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. Now we're looking at the kings of the earth. Which country on this planet got everybody following them? Is it China? No. Is it Russia? No. Is it Australia? No. The United Kingdom? No. It's talking about America. Because every nation on this planet comes here for commerce. In Ezekiel chapter 17, this place called America is also known as the city of traffic. Because everything traffics itself through here. Drugs, corruption, dirty money, murder, corrupt religions, politics, and every demon and sorcery on the planet Earth comes right through this country right here. So when it says the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication, 
Wine represents knowledge. What has this whore done to people on this earth? It has Christianized the world. You see this world map? This is a world map of the Roman Catholic world. The ideologies that they use is democracy and republicanism. Communism was made up by Stalin and the Russians. The Catholic Church and the false doctrines of Catholicism has spread all over the planet Earth right now. And if you look at it, you see the 12 tribes of Israel spread all over the Earth right now? In captivity, yes. But these people are not in any position in their church systems to be showing the truth. Why? Because they're in captivity under these people. And right now, every Negro Western and Puerto Rican worldwide that's scattered through North Central South America, they've been influenced by this poor right here, the Roman church. And he got all the other nations, all these nations around the world. It says Catholic population by country. The purple is more than 50%. Mexico, South America, parts of the land of Ham, Europe, Australia, and the yellow is less than 10, and the other colors is 10% to 24, 25 to 49%. That means a Catholic church in the United States has influenced the whole planet Earth from nation to nation, island to island, group to group, and nation against nation. And no other nation on this planet Earth has spread their ideologies and influence all over the Earth like this country. That's right. So this must be the country this Bible is speaking about. See? And it says here. And he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. So John was carried into the spirit and the Lord took him into a vision and showed him this whore. She had seven heads, ten horns, and she was sitting on a beast. What is this? Well, when you go back into the Europeans' uh, beginnings of the Greeks and the Romans, that was a white man's first empires on the planet Earth. From that time, you went to the Spanish, the French, the Germans, the Russians, and the British. Notice the significance of those seven snakes on our head. The ten horns represent back then when it first started off in 1958. There was a community called the Common Market of the European Community, which was formed in 1958. The original ten it split off into about 20 nations now. But the prophecy took place in 1958 over here in Europe. They, today they call it the European Economic Community. And they got over 20 members. Britain just stepped out of it and the other nations are in there. And it's also part of NATO. And it says what? This is how they started. One, Switzerland, two, Belgium, three, Sweden, four, Norway, five, Netherlands, six, Britain, seven, Denmark, West Germany, Greece, and Brussels. Now that we know that Germany came together, and in 1989, the war fell. Russia had one part, and the Americans had liberated their uh, ancestors, like Britain, and France and Spain and so forth. So they liberated them during World War II because Hitler went in there. Hitler was trying to take over the whole world. But it wasn't his time to do that because America was the one foretold in the Bible to take over the whole world, not Hitler. See, so he didn't make it. And so these 10 common markets came out of that. And the seven European nations that started off in that fashion all can go back and trace their lineage back to
to these seven horns that's on top of this core. And she's sitting on top of this beast. And that beast represented the ancient Roman Empire. When you go back to Daniel chapter 7, you read about the first beast. Daniel chapter 7 tells you about the first beast and there was a Roman Empire back then. And the Roman Empire had spread its borders from Dodane in Italy and it took over the whole known world back then in the Middle East and it ruled over all countries and nations at that time. So from that time, this other beast rose up, but this time it got a woman sitting on top of it. So when it says, and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet colored, decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and a filthiness of her fornication. This represents the Catholic Church. In her hand is a cup of gold. The gold represents fornication and abominations. What did they spread through the earth? Sunday service. The abomination of the Catholic Church. It started during the time of the Renaissance. We had classes on that with Caesar Borgia, the Medici family, and the Pope's Julius II. And it started this ambition of their conquering of the world at that time and the reforming of the ancient Roman Empire and it was called a Renaissance. And from that time to now, the Roman church has spread their borders and their influences to all nations. Chinese are Catholic, check it out. You go in the Chinese store right now, these Chinese Americans, what do they have on the walls? Churches of Caesar Borgia. They got saints being so-called white people. Where they get that from? The Catholic Church. You go down there to South America, they got a big statue down there of Caesar Borgia with his eye arms wide open. And right now, everybody's down there being plagued with coronavirus. Millions of people have died from that plague. And the Lord said, many are gonna die in this town because they know not the most high and his word. He said, I'm going to plague the world. Two years ago, down in Brazil, they were openly worshiping the devil. They were walking in the street butt naked. They had this festival going on for months. And the spirit told me, the most high get ready to come down on the Gentiles' idols. And they had floats, they had naked women, they had baggots out there, they had every abomination. They even made a statue of the devil and put them up in... Mm-hmm. 